Uh, but we're going to move on now to our next topic, and this is the one that's going to get heated. Because <laughs> when we do our cumulative, this is going to be very hard, I feel. For some of us, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> so, our second topic for this week, sticking with that classic theme, we have the... I'll just read verbatim what I said here. So while the Game Boy Classic has rumors swirling, the N64 Classic is assuredly going to be a thing at some point, even if it's a few years away. So what are five games that we must include on the platform should it release? And we're going to go around the room again and state our five. Uh, <clears throat> I, I guess I'll start this time since I went last last time. Reverse order it. Yeah, we'll reverse order it up this time. Then we'll mix the order up completely again for whatever. Um, so let me before we start, let's ask a question here. Yeah. Are we are we excluding rare games since they aren't owned by Nintendo anymore? No, or any game do we just that released we on the fantasy platform. Fantasy World that that's coming back. Any game that released on the platform, it doesn't have to be exclusive. Okay. Okay. Good enough. Yep. Okay. Because I, I never said it had to be exclusive, and there's okay. games on the classic systems that weren't exclusive. So. Okay. I just want to make sure. All right. Oh boy, this is, I, I I have a tough job just naming just five of mine. You know what? You know what? Because my list is full of a bunch of ones that I don't think anyone's going to mention. We're actually a game over Jesse start. I just realized that I actually went with the intent of not going first on my list because otherwise I'm just going to name off all the obvious ones right away. All Watch right. none of us name it because none of us want to be that, that guy. <laughs> Oh, I got a list. Five games? Five games. Five and 64 games. All right. These are likely going to be the most obvious games, but Ocarina of Time. Yep. Super Mario 64, Super Smash Brothers, Star Fox, and Mario Kart 64. All right. All right. Hmm. Well, let's hop on over to... Uh, Eric. No, no. Yeah, no, no, no. no, you're doing it. I'm making you. <laughs> Here you go. I, I'm, I'm mixing the order up right now. Let's do it. Oh, good God. You, you don't tell me. You know how many games you have? Yeah, I have 18. That's why I can go last. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. oh, it's not happening. None of my games have been listed yet, so. Yeah, okay, fine. Fine. If you're going to make me go, you got to have Conker's Bad Fur Day. Mm. You gotta have Goldeneye. You gotta have Banjo Kazooie. Huh. <laughs> I, I think you have to include a Mario Party. And that's four. So let's go with. Uh... <laughs> Snowboard kids. Yeah. One or two? Ooh. They're both good. So one. 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 But OG. Okay. Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> okay. Bobby, you're up. Okay. I d I can't remember. Was it was Mario Kart sixty four listed? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I listed. Yep, yeah, that yeah, okay. that All one was knocked right. out right away. <clears throat> All right, Star Fox was not though, correct? No, I I, I did Star Fox. Oh, as what well. the hell, man? I wasn't <laughs> taking all. I wasn't of them. sleeping. I'm taking all. I was of asleep. Them. I apologize. Okay, Shadows of the Empire. Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, Turok, the Dinosaur Hunter. There we go. Um, NFL Blitz. Nice, nice. Uh, I want to go No Mercy. Okay. And I want to go. Oh man, this is tough. This this one that's going to be being it's tough when you're getting down to that last one. I know the last one's tough. Um, look, up, look up, I'm leaving off. Oh, here you go. Diddy, Diddy Kong Racing. Diddy go. Kong Racing. Yep. There we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Awesome. It's made it really easy for me because only one of my games got crossed off. And you guys, well, got, you guys got rid of your whole entire list, but you, I didn't. you couldn't. No, you couldn't have. I said almost because if you would have crossed off a bunch of my list, I would have just said stuff off your list. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Pokemon Stadium. Ooh, yes, yes. I I don't know why that's not even around anymore. Oh, Pokemon Stadium. Um, Rogue Squadron. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Rogue Squadron, to, to me, better than Star Fox in every way. Ooh. Uh, let's see here. 
Cool, with Harvest Moon 64. Mm-hmm. I think it's really the game that made Harvest Moon blow up right there. Yeah. Um, It is hard to... Because you guys didn't eliminate enough of mine. It is hard to, to eliminate down myself. But this is just... I'm saying that... I don't know if this is one of the, the best per se, but I'm going to say this game because I, I've been saying for years that it needs to come back. Pokemon Snap. Mm-hmm. Just needs to happen. And this is going to be my, my out there one because I was a big fan of the show and a big fan of the game, the Xeno Warrior Princess game. This is the most obscure list I've ever heard of in my life. <laughs> the, there was a couple, uh, like I had 1080 snowboarding as a potential. Yeah. Um, but I don't know that I, I would put 1080 snowboarding in my top five. So I went, with, I went with games that I actually would legit argue are top five potential. Now, obviously. Are we happy nobody said EverQuest 64? I love EverQuest 64. Quest 64. Quest 64. Yeah, sorry. Quest 64. I love <laughs> yeah. Quest 64. But unfortunately, Quest 64, um, once I played other games, I realized it really wasn't that good. It was a nice attempt. I'm just going to throw out two more games here. Okay, get those honorable mentions in. (laughs) Perfect Dark and Donkey Kong 64. Okay. Understandable. All right, so this is where we're going to have a hard time debating, I think. Because as obvious as it might be, I know one specific game people are going to want on the list. I'm going to be arguing against. (laughs) Um, So let's go around the room. And uh, get, get this going. I don't want to be the one that puts two on. So let's, because uh, I got to put two on last time. And so did, uh, I think, Jesse? Everybody put two on. Like, oh, I have three. Yeah. We got to put three on last yeah. time. Yeah, those two did. Yeah, so, we'll, so we'll have it start with, you know what, Eric, since you have so many on your list, we'll have you start. Oh, jeez. First, <laughs> first game you're going to nominate for the list. Conquers. Conquers Bad Friday. My, my favorite game of all time, pretty much. This specific version is your favorite, too. Yes. Don't don't even start me with the Xbox version. The Xbox version is fine for single player. It's the multiplayer <laughs> yeah, yeah. they they kind of butchered. Um. All right. Then I guess we'll hop on over to uh, Jesse. Ocarina. All right. I feel like it has to be. All right. Um. I I think it's obvious. Mario sixty four. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, you know, I don't know if any of us mentioned the game, but I'm putting it on there anyways. Majora's Mask, <laughs> because uh, what are we eliminating it to? Well, we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. Okay. Uh, and then it would be back to Eric. What's the last game you would do for the top five? Oh God. It, how do I pick between the two of them? It, Trust me, I don't think this is going to be the final list. Yeah, I was going to say. This is not going to be final. There's going to be some heated debates here. Yeah. Uh, yeah let's go six, Mario Kart 64. Okay. Solid pick. All right, and we're... So... Our top five, as it stands right now, this is not final. We got Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, Ocarina of Time, Mario 64, Majora's Mask, and Mario Kart 64. So, now here's where it gets fun. Um, I don't want to go first on what I want to bump off. Uh, because this is... Jesse and I are going to go five rounds on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go with... Uh, how about a uh, Nintendo Guru? What what game would you bump off this list and replace? I would bump off Majora's Mask. Okay. Um, and I would probably put um either Golden Eye or Star Fox sixty four in there. Mm-hmm. But I would probably go Golden Eye because I feel like that's the more beloved like it's it's the beat it's the starter of the first person shooter mm-hmm. multiplayer type thing. So I would probably go that way. And the reason why I would bump Majora's Mask off is because I feel like if you're going to put a Zelda game one, Ocarina is the true Zelda game of the two. Um, I'm not saying that Majora's Mask is a bad game by any stretch of imagination, but I feel like of the two games, one is a Zelda game and the other one is an offshoot of a Zelda game to some extension. And so I would go, that's why I would bump Majora's Mask off. 
this is gonna be a fun argument too. All right. <laughs> So I've got I've got Goldeneye listed as a potential replacement for Majora's Mask here. Mm-hmm. We'll uh, see how many other games or how many other options get thrown out there. Uh, Jesse, is there a game you bump off this list and replace with something? All right. If he's bumping off Majora's Mask, I love Majora's Mask. So I'm going to bump off Goldeneye that he just put. Okay. No, that's okay. That's okay. Perfect Dark. Mm, perfect Dark. Okay. There's a lot of people that think Perfect Dark's better. The the obvious superior version. <laughs> oh, 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 snap. All right. All right. So we'll, we'll get to a debate on that here in a second. Uh, Eric, is there a game you'd bump off to replace? It could be Majora's Mask again. No, no, or one of the yeah. games. That, no, I know, nothing's I know. technically bumped off yet because there's a potential bump offs. I, I know. And it, like I said, this may be my favorite game of all time, but, you know... I don't know how you don't have Smash Brothers on here. So, probably have to bump Conkers because it's not, I don't think it's as well known game. Bumping your own nomination. I am, I am. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's weird because, you know, it's just all of a sudden that I realized Smash wasn't on here and it's like, how do you not have Smash on here? You do need a good multiplayer game on there. Well, Mario Kart's on there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, let's see. Don't okay. listen to the idiot. Yeah, but I, I agree with... I agree with the, the idea of bumping Conquer for Smash, um, it, just because Smash started it all, mm-hmm. and as big as it is, like to to me to not have because it's only five games. Yeah, right. So I feel right. like it's it's there's yeah. only the N sixty four didn't have a gigantic library of wealth of games. They had a lot of good games. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't as huge as like the SNES or the NES. Like it's a little bit. I feel easier to to get the top five. Just because I feel like a game like Smash, Mario Kart, Zelda, whatever is picked, and Mario 64, so that leaves you one game is the Wiggle Room game, in my my opinion. Mm. So I think that's where mm. it, it all boils down. You oh, know what I mean? To, to some type of difference. Here's the thing. I hate this top five list. Now, oh. This is not even remotely close to what I would put out there. Um... Mario 64 would get totally bumped for Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah. yeah. Um, Banjo-Kazooie or Banjo-Tooie? Banjo-Kazooie. Oh, Kazooie. Kazooie. Aww. Uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day would totally stay. Uh, Goldeneye would bump off Ocarina of Time. <gasps> <laughs> How dare you? This is, this is uh, the crackheaded list. I don't, I don't think we could be friends anymore. So... So uh, the thing is, like, these are this is why I, I want to go last because I know I'm gonna upset so many people right now because, like, especially in the Captain Google's, I can feel like there's these four are guaranteed, and I'm like, no, no, I wouldn't even put Smash on the list. Yeah, um, but you gotta think, like, this is your want list. Let's talk reality. The, this this is not is want. This is what I think like, are the best N64 games. Yeah, but that's very argumentative. Like I think well, that's Well, I mean that's what we're doing here. You're, you're way, our, that list, list is way in the minority. I guarantee you. <laughs> if you put a poll up, your list against my list, I guarantee you your list is way but down. This isn't a popularity you don't have smash. <laughs> this it is four people. people. It could be. This is four people debating mm-hmm. on what yeah. deserves to be in this list. So, yeah. <laughs> I know I'm going to lose a lot of these debates because <laughs> you three are going to argue that the cows going to smash has to be on there, that Ocarina of Time has to be on there. So, you know what? Let, let's, uh, instead of me picking a fight with like each one of these games, let me start with a fight I know I'm going to lose, but one I need to make. Because everyone <laughs> always asks me why Ocarina of Time is like my 10th favorite Zelda game uh, and why I think Majora's Mask totally destroys it and should be the Zelda representation on this list. If there's going to be a Zelda representation, um, but I I would honestly, if I'm going to knock out one game, it's Ocarina of Time, and that I would replace with Goldeneye. Now, I I have a feeling I'm going to get outnumbered, and Ocarina of Time is going to stay. I I just know it. Yeah, but here's my question to you. I don't want to hear why you want to replace it with with that. I want to know why, because I because I feel like if we're going off the same rules of the game. Then only one Zelda game gets to stay here. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I want to hear your argument of why why Majora's Mask, Majora's should, stay Mask should stay over Ocarina. It's a better game in every single possible imaginable way. There's nothing Ocarina of Time does that's better than Majora's Mask. Um, obviously that's really broad. So let me let, let me get a little specific. The controls are tighter in Majora's Mask, so it controls better. 
uh, the visuals are technically better. Barely. I know it's like built on the same engine, but but it is technically better. They even had to use the expansion pack to get the game to run. The time system actually made the world feel alive. Unlike in Ocarina of Time, where everyone's doing like the same thing all the time, whether if you're a kid, they're all doing the same thing. If you're an adult, they're all doing whatever. It might be a little different or they're dead, but they're doing the same thing. <laughs> Whereas in Majora's Mask, while it's built on a three-day system and obviously everyone's doing like the same thing throughout those three days, it alters depending on who you are going to interact with. So the world felt alive, and that is something that Ocarina of Time, it just didn't feel alive to me. It, it, it was a fantastic game. It felt... My, my The reasons that I dislike Ocarina of Time, uh, and I don't even dislike it. I, I like Ocarina of Time. I played it. I beat it. it. I mean, it's the game. After I played that, that's when I started making Zelda sites. So obviously, I really enjoyed it at the time. But mm. as, as I played more games, especially once Majora's Mask came out, my eyes just opened. I'm like, wait a second. Ocarina of Time is not that good compared to this game. Ocarina of Time is essentially a link to the past in 3D. There isn't mm-hmm. much that Ocarina of Time did uh that uh, it, it revolutionized things lock on system it successfully transitioned a popular franchise into 3d which i'm sure all of you guys know at the time was very hard to do mm-hmm. most mm-hmm. 2d franchises at the time struggled i mean sonic even to this day has still struggled <laughs> to stick in 3d yeah um i'm not gonna say there haven't been good sonic games in 3d i'm sure some people out there have some games they like i i actually like the what was it the sonic lost world wii u Mm-hmm. Um, I actually really like that. There, there was two levels in there that they should have scrapped and and just built something else. But, um, that also felt a lot like Mario Galaxy. So I don't know. Maybe that that was my affinity towards it, uh, just how they presented the world. But, yeah, it, I, I give it credit for that, and I give it credit for uh, creating the lock on system. Um, technically, the lock on system existed in other games before it, but it's the game that popularized it and made it so other games would start using that lock on system. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's not that it's a bad game, but Majora's Mask, it it improved the controls. Controls were a big issue with me. Once I played Majora's Mask, I was like, wait a second, this feels clunky playing Ocarina of Time. The controls just aren't as precise. Uh, plus you have additional moves you can do that you can't do in Ocarina of Time. Uh, the story itself. Um, I'm, I'm not one of those people that thinks like, you know, the whole theory that Link died. I actually think that's a terrible theory and Eiji Anoma has already debunked that theory. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, it's it's just it didn't happen. I mean, I don't know how clear it has to be. Like when EJ Anuma comes out, it's like, yeah, that's not what happened. If you think that, like, you're ignoring all the other emotions that happen in in every area. Like, thank you, because I I've never thought it was real. But um, I I bring it up because the story itself is very dark. Um, like people thought Ocarina of Time was dark because you know Ganon, Dorf, you know, won and like killed everyone uh, or killed a lot of people, not everyone, obviously. Uh, and then you ultimately, you know, because of your mistake, and I understand the deepness in that, you know, you pulled the Master Sword, which allowed him to do it. Uh, but in Majora's Mask, the world is literally going to die. It's going to end in three days if you don't stop it. You can actually see it end. It's not like in Ocarina of Time where it's just a game over screen if you die. That's not what happens. You fail in Majora's Mask, you get to see everyone die. You get to see the world just get destroyed by the moon. On top of that... In, in, in addition to the the, the, the storyline there, you also have the storyline with Skull Kid and how deep that goes. The storytelling was just so much better. It's almost like you could tell that they had people that cared about story in this game. Whereas the story in uh, Ocarina of Time, well, it had some original moments. And the one thing I will say Ocarina of Time had better music uh, is that the story in Ocarina of Time just didn't didn't have that punch. It felt very a link to the past. Like the structure of the game was very a link to the past. And while I understand the argument, you know, like uh, in Senegal, you, you made the Majora's Mask was kind of a side game, uh, which mm-hmm. that really irritated me. But I understand because it's, it was like the first game to not really take place in Hyrule besides Link's Awakening, which was a dream. Um, so I, I understand it. The premises it did, the time system uh, that hasn't returned yet. I mean, we, we've obviously had days and stuff, but we haven't had like a limited time system. Uh, we, and we also haven't had people necessarily working on schedules. But the the reality is a lot of what that game did, other games actually copied and did things with, especially when it came to... Uh, if you look at a lot of side questing in a lot of other games that aren't Zelda, uh, a lot of it you can call, look back at Majora's Mask and be like, oh yeah, they th- that's the one that really set the side quest standard that everyone's building off of. Uh, Nintendo even did it themselves. In Wind Waker, there's certain side quests that clearly took inspiration from... 
uh, Majora's Mask. Plus, Majora's Mask had the best side quest, I think, of all time. And, and the Andrew and Caffey side quest is just um, a, amazing ending, extremely emotional throughout. Uh, and on top of that, while you're trying to uh, reunite these lost lovers, um, you have to worry about the world's ending at the same time. So, like, how are you going to balance that priority of trying to help those lost lovers plus trying to save the world? And obviously, you know, you could reset and everything, but then you reset, you lose that. So, uh, obviously, the Bombers Notebook kept track of everything. But it it was just a very unique game that did what Ocarina of the Time didn't dare do because Ocarina of Time was... Ocarina of Time was what they wanted to use as a template to bring the game to 3D. It wasn't the full potential of what 3D Zelda's could be. And Majora's Mask, to me, just did everything better. Storytelling better, world building even better, believe it or not. Uh, the music wasn't as good. Uh, I think the four dungeons, while I, I, I agree that is a limited amount, and that was primarily probably due to the fact they kind of threw this game together in a year, uh, I think those four dungeons are vastly superior to what is in Ocarina of Time. Now, I will understand there are some dungeons in Ocarina of Time that I, I absolutely love, but... Uh, I like the Majora's Mask ones better. I like the boss fights better. I like the story better. I like the side questing better. I like the controls better. There really isn't much in Majora's Mask I don't like better than Ocarina of Time besides the music. Anyways, that's my argument, and I'm sure it's about to get completely destroyed. <laughs> um, I mean, it's all personal opinions, of course, but... All right, the, the only thing that I... Well, there's two things that I have to say about this. One is I remember when Majora's Mask... 3D released. Uh, Al Nimbo was being interviewed about it, and he mentioned that Majora's Mask was developed for people who were experts at Ocarina of Time. People who have played through Ocarina of Time and they're used to the world. They know the combat system, the combat system, how to solve all the puzzles and everything. Majora's Mask is like if you took those same type of puzzles and enemies and like switched it to hard mode is what I took from what he was saying. Sure. He said that it was designed specifically for people who had already completed Ocarina of Time. Sure. Sure. And with, uh, as the Zelda series in a whole, whether or not Majora's Mask or Ocarina of Time should be on the list. I do agree that, there are things that make me like Majora's Mask better than Ocarina of Time. But I feel if you're only going to have one game on the list, it needs to be something that better represents the entire franchise to give people an idea. Uh, with that said, there's probably a lot of people who have already played Ocarina of Time that may have not messed with Majora's Mask because it's not as popular, I don't think, as Ocarina. But... I, I mean, bottom line is that they make an N64 classic, they're both there. But, <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. I mean, yeah. but, but, I mean, this is our top five. Like, for, like, forget what is happening. Like, like I understand the argument that Ocarina of Time is the milestone game, right? I mean, that's the, the thing I gave it credit for. You got a 99 Metacritic against a 95. So, I mean, like, yeah, the ninety nine. Okay, <laughs> Metacritic wise, like, like what it's what it's no, what it was yeah. based upon, reviewed upon, like at that time. So uh, about oh, the really? Metacritic rating, about the Metacritic rating. Yeah, if you actually look at the Metacritic rating of, of Ocarina of Time, which, which has maintained like the number one spot on like every mm -hmm. accumulative thing, it has like the least amount of reviews counted towards it. Mm -hmm. So like, if games today like breath of the wild if they only counted like 14 or 22 reviews it's a 10 out of 10 and it's 100 percent. but they don't they count like 80 100 plus it's like literally impossible to top a game that only averaged the you know 20 reviews yeah, or but metacritic has tw okay so i'm looking at it right now metacritic yeah, has yeah. 22 for ocarina and 27 for majora's mask mm -hmm. they're both user scores they're both a 9.2 yep um so, but I that's mean, kind of it, my point. By the time Majora's Mask came out, they counted five more reviews towards it. Then, mm -hmm. And if you think about it, 22 to 27, those five reviews can literally change the game on what it is, on, on what that score is. Mm -hmm. So that that's why I always say Ocarina of Time is going to maintain the number one position probably forever by default. 
because yeah. there just wasn't enough reviewers back then or enough reviews counted or enough reviews they could find. Internet was really young. Um, mm-hmm. Internet kind of started blowing up after that uh, mm-hmm. in the 2000s, which is when Majora's Mask came out. Um, okay. So, yeah, I, I understand. Like, in, in terms of impact, Ocarina of Time had more impact. No, yeah. no, no doubt that it had more impact on gaming in general, even. Uh, but this is a top five, and to me, it's not even in my top ten Zelda games. So why would it be in my top five N64 games? But this is our top five. I know. Yeah. So what, what's what's the other guys want to say about this? Like, Jesse. They're just going to say nothing because he didn't play the games. <laughs> if you had to pick one, Jesse, which are you picking? Based on which one's the better game to you. Rather than which one do you think is like the most impactful game that represents the series? You're killing me here. I'm having. This is one of that, the. That's what it's supposed to be. It's not not necessarily what had the most impact. It's what we think are the best. You can consider impact if you want. Obviously, I can't tell you not to. <clears throat> All right, I'll say this. I I say, at this point in time, Majora's Mask because the last oh! few times I that's went back to play yeah. Ocarina of Time. I've played through Ocarina of Time so many times, and <laughs> you don't like it as, as Nate said, Ocarina of Time is basically a link to the past in 3D. And if you take it a step further, Twilight Princess is Ocarina of Time on the GameCube. And Twilight Princess uh, and is both better. Games, you go like the forest dungeon, fire dungeon, water dungeon. So, uh, yeah, I'm 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 sorry, everybody watching. If this makes you mad, I think they're not. They'll be less mad I've, about you going Majora's Mask. They'll be more upset that Ocarina of Time's like not even in my top ten Zelda games. So. <laughs> I okay. So my answer is I've played through Ocarina of Time or games like Ocarina of Time so many times that the last couple of times I played through Ocarina of Time, I actually got bored because it is Ouch. go here, do this, go here, do that. But when you play Majora's Mask after each dungeon it is you know the dungeons are in a particular order yep but between the dungeons you have dozens of different things that you can go and do so if you're bored and you don't want to save termani ranch or whatever you can go and help the other people in termina you can plus aliens so many different things aliens. you can do remember when they brought up the alien idea for breath of the wild that they had oh aliens are gonna come <laughs> yes. breath of the wild abducted i'm like they already did that it's with Jorah's mask <laughs> yeah i mean it's abducting cows granted and i think they were gonna yeah. expand it more do, than that but... wait do, does i don't think breath of the wild has cows that can even be abducted so it's like what even, are they doing yeah here? i don't even think there are cows no i think about it, i don't remember ever seeing one in the game that's you, weird isn't it it is. Is there still milk in the Oh, there's goat milk. But there's goats in the game. That's so weird. Like, that is why, kind of weird. I never no realized. Cows? Because, like, the cows were there. They've been there for a while, and now they're not around. There are, like, the runes on the ranch. They abducted. <laughs> what? They all got abducted. No, they got abducted. Yeah, there we go. So whatever you did in Majora's Mask, you actually failed, and they went over to Hyrule and took all their cows. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And that's like, I-, I would love to see those aliens come back. That would be awesome. Um What's the history? They Everyone, everyone wants to know what's the, the history the behind Minish. the Majora. What's what's Majora's story? What's the story with the aliens? <laughs> it's just really randomly added in. What's what's up with those? Uh, okay, uh, Guru, Nintendo Guru. Which one uh, between those two would you choose? I. It doesn't matter to me either one. It, I, I honestly Whoa! have no. I'm, am I going to win the argument that I thought I had no chance? <laughs> no way. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't. Okay. It, and Eric Honestly, really that's a, my bigger gripe is with with you saying that Banjo is better than Mario sixty four. <laughs> we'll than, get we'll get that than yeah. anything. So we'll get, we'll get to that. I don't. I, I'll fight you on that one. That's when you can have whatever you want. <laughs> okay. So okay. Well, what do you so, think, Eric? Oh, I don't have. I don't have a. You don't have a. Okay. So. Uh, I, I mean, I, I mean, I have to admit, like, I I'm surprised this is happening. One. I, I said, but I'm literally crossing off Ocarina of Time off the top five N64 games. Okay. I have, I'm hearing the fans cry <laughs> and getting mad at me right now because literally before I made my argument, Game Over Jesse was going Ocarina of Time. All right. So that brings up an interesting conundrum because obviously we had games suggested to knock off Majora's Mask. Um, but now we have an open spot for sure, 100% for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, though, if we want to knock any of the others off. 
Um, well, first off, let, 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 let's argue which one's going to replace Ocarina of Time. So well, right now we had Smash argued as an inclusion, GoldenEye, and Perfect Dark. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll leave those three, because those are the three games I think we're arguing to get back on that list. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that open spot, between Smash, GoldenEye, and Perfect Dark, which game would you pick, Eric? Oof. Golly. I mean, as much as I like Perfect Dark, I I, I got to go away from that one. Um, I think it has to come down between uh, Smash and Goldeneye. Just because, of the again, I'm going to go with the one that you said not to go with is the impact that it's had on, like, everything with Goldeneye being basically the base for a lot of the first-person shooters. And then Smash, look at what it's turned into. Um, so, yeah. I, I think the bigger impact would have to be Goldeneye, so I'm going to go with Goldeneye. All right. What do we got, uh, Guru? Which one would you go with within those three? Um, I'd probably go Goldeneye because I feel like oh. that era, Goldeneye <laughs> had a bigger impact. Um, sure. You didn't like Smash kind of started it, but I don't think Smash really kicks off till Melee. Like, I think once Melee hits, that's when the entire community uprises and starts this whole swell for Smash. Mm -hmm. So, for me, I would definitely go go Goldeneye. Uh, I don't have the computer in front of me right now, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Smash 64 massively outsold Melee. Melee has just stayed relevant because of the competitive community. Well, that's what I mean. Like, it's it's created a groundswell yeah. behind it. But that's like, not why a, Smash is yeah. popular. What's that? The competitive community is not actually why Smash Bros. is popular, though. It's a very I niche got... thing. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Okay. It's, a, it's a very, like, hardcore thing, but it's very niche. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I don't care. I love the Smash. I'm like, a Smash community, that competitive community, don't get mad at me. I'm, I'm just saying that, like, I don't know. For, for me personally, I don't think... Uh, one, I don't even think think Melee is the best Smash game. And I don't think that it is... That it starting the competitive community really matters. Especially since Nintendo has very poorly supported that community. Mm-hmm. Uh, if mm-hmm. Nintendo doesn't care about it, why should I? It's kind of... I hate saying that. I'm a fan, right? Hmm. But um, So you're going with Goldeneye, you said? Yes. Okay. Jesse, which one are you going with? All right, for me personally, when I played Smash Brothers, uh, I didn't really have people at the time to play it with me, so it was always the same. Oh, that is the caveat. With single player experience over and over. Um, I never really got into GoldenEye because I just seen it as why play GoldenEye when we can play the better more fun version with perfect dark (laughs) because it took some of the levels and it added on to it so like when you go back and play the golden eye multiplayer and you played some of those same levels there were areas that just felt incomplete (laughs) so i'm gonna have to go with perfect dark uh and rule out golden eye and Smash, Smash Brothers. Okay. We got little tallies here. Um, it comes down to me. Real quick, real quick. I just want to answer your question earlier. Um, yeah. Melee outsold 64 okay. by 2 million okay. units. Okay, thank you. So, thank you for that. What, what were the numbers on that? Uh, it was 7.41 for Melee. All right. 5.55 5 for okay. uh, yeah. 64. All right, thank you for that. I, I want to say with that, Melee was also playable on the Wii. So even though a new console came out, you could still yeah. buy GameCube yeah. games and play them mm-hmm. as if they were new. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Hey, I'll take the L on that. It's all good. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hard for me because like, I don't... Uh, when we do the podcast, I don't know if you guys... Well, Jesse's probably seen some. I don't have a computer in front of me, so like I can't mm-hmm. research things. And my phone yeah. that I could research on is what I record with. <laughs> so I literally have no way to look anything up. Uh, it's all off the top of my head, which things get fuzzy when we're talking this old school stuff here. Um, unless it's Zelda, I could tell you like Zelda sales figures off the back of my hand, but uh, that's a story for a different time. That's what happens when you <laughs> cover Zelda for eighteen years of your life. Um, wasted away. Okay. Oh man. To be honest, I ne- I never thought that I would see a top five 
where we're, where we're seriously debating Smash's inclusion. Mm-hmm. Um, because it was such a special game to me. I know the character list wasn't as big, and there's better Smash games, but on the N64, man, played Smash all the time. It would almost be... It's a weird analogy because Smash is a better game, but I remember track and field on NES and mm-hmm. how, how much we played that. Mm-hmm. It's, oh, like, yeah. it's akin to that to me. We're like, I played that game all the time, multiplayer, like crazy. It was it was a blast. It was one of the most fun things I ever did on NES. Yeah. Same thing's true here on N64. It's hard for me to think of a multiplayer game I had more fun with than Smash. Um, but then GoldenEye. Just special. And <laughs> I... <laughs> It's tough for me because Perfect Dark, I don't, I've never w- was one of those people that felt Perfect Dark was the better game. I think Perfect Dark potentially had the better single player. Mm-hmm. Uh, and well, I think it had better designed multiplayer maps. I thought the actual act of playing multiplayer and the various modes and all the cheats and all the different things you could do in GoldenEye were vastly superior. Paintball mode, big head mode. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Golden Gun. Um, I will give Perfect Dark the bot being able to play yeah. bots. Yeah, I will give it that. That's one thing I also like sure. about Time Splitters too. Oh, yeah. as well. Um, not not a, not even in consideration here, but yeah. yeah. Um, it's uh, I, I'm gonna have to just give it to Golden Knight because I just had more fun with it, multiplayer wise. Single player wise, I, I think Perfect Dark to me was a little better. But man, all the various modes, the way to play. Uh, I'm not gonna go with like impact. Like, oh no, a lot all the future FPS games on console. Like, yeah, it, it was like the game that and Perfect Dark really combined were the games to prove that you could have FPS games, you know, off of PCs and on home consoles. But uh, except the, at the time, wasn't it like Doom? Uh, and maybe Unreal Tournament back then. Uh, that kind of were the big ones on PC. I think I'm trying. I'm trying to remember time because I, I played a lot of PC games back then too. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna have to go with Golden. I'm sorry, Jesse. <sighs> I, I'm sorry, I'm making another perfect. Just getting stomped on. <laughs> but well, hey, hey he could have went the other way in Ocarina of Time. He could have. Some, someone probably would have eventually agreed with him. Um. All right, so Golden Eye, yes, folks, Golden Eye has replaced Ocarina of Time. All right. <laughs> so other games that we argued to get to get uh, removed was uh, Eric's. Eric argued replacing his own nomination with Smash. So you guys think, uh, you know, I'll cross off Golden Knights. We just got that on the list. Mm-hmm. Um, that either Perfect Dark or Smash should replace uh, Conqueror's Bed for a Day, or is there another game you guys think should replace it? No, I think I think because we were debating. Smash, if I, I would agree with him in saying that Smash should replace Conquer. Okay. I'm 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 with that as well. Smash. <sighs> no, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Conquer's Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Conquer's here's the thing. Really here's the th- game. here's to me. Here's the thing to me. Conquer's Bad Fur Day to me is the best N sixty four game. I don't yeah. think there's any game that's come out since or or even on that system that's anywhere near it. From the humor the platforming, the oh, approach sure. to story. It is literally Rare's best game, in my opinion. And unfortunately, yeah, it was, it was I mean, not unfortunately, it was rated M. Mm-hmm. But that that to me just meant uh, that, unlike Banjo-Kazooie, where maybe they had to reserve themselves a little bit, with Conker's Bad Fur Day, they got to take off the handcuffs and do whatever crazy stuff they wanted. Mm-hmm. I'm mean, To this day, I still listen to The Great Mighty Pooh. It is on oh, my yeah. playlist. Um... I, I even to this day, like we were so pumped when it came to Xbox. We we're like, oh, dude, our, our like our favorite game ever, yeah, coming out in HD, kind of sorta. This is gonna be awesome, and it was awesome. The multiplayer was okay. It just destroyed, you know, the N sixty four multiplayer. I don't know why they had changed it. Yeah, but yeah, I, that that and that's kind of my thing. Like, this isn't anything against Smash mm-hmm. to me personally. This is Conquer's Bad Fur Day to me was like on par with the best platforming games on the system had the best humor on the system Mm -hmm. had some of the best unique music on the system and just had one of the best stories in my opinion now that's all i'm I'm gonna say on my phone at 
conquers bad for a day and there there's a lot of stuff that i've forgotten about the game oh, that it me. should make the list hit me hit, hit yeah. me with some stuff i, I love looking back at conquer huh no i was just uh like i had like the trailer and stuff uh reviews <laughs> skipping through looking at like the different areas and stuff because it's like it's unique oh. they they took banjo kazooie banjo tooie which was already a really great platformer collectathon type game yep. and just made it better yeah they took the handcuffs off mm-hmm. um and i'm not just saying because i'm ready just in general it felt like they anything they wanted to do they could do now there wasn't yeah, i mean was. like the great marty poo that kind of thing would have never existed in the original uh banjo kazooie even though you could argue it's borderline reality is they're not putting that in there because they know that it's going to be a game that's more catered towards like the mario 64 yeah. crowd well banjo kazooie felt like their answer to Super Mario 64. And then Banjo-Tooie was just, oh, let's try to make the same thing again and add minor improvements. Mm -hmm. And then... Rare, if you're listening, you could just make the same thing again and release another game. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) And then with Conquer, it's like they took everything that they've learned, all the experience they had from working on Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, and anything else uh the donkey kong 64 Mm -hmm. game and they were like okay instead of making a nintendo game let's make the game that we want to make Mm -hmm. yeah and and nintendo was you know i i remember reading some interviews nintendo was hesitant at first um but then they're like i think someone it was someone inside nintendo that said i know you're hesitant uh it was someone at nintendo america said we realize you're hesitant nintendo japan but let's look at their track record Mm -hmm. Just let them do it. They they they've deserved. They've earned the right to do this. Look at what they've done for us. Um, which is ironic that that was the argument because then they later sold the company to Microsoft. Which again, you know, they had an opportunity before Microsoft to buy Rare, um, but Nintendo didn't want to take the t- take the bite and, and do that. So to the chagrin of fans everywhere, um, especially after what's happened to Rare since. I, I think what also makes Conquerors better, and this is more relating to today is that Microsoft and Rare kind of refuses to ever even remake the game. Uh, Because they even even making like a sequel to it or anything, because like the game was so fantastic in in the bubble that it exists in, that they don't think they could do it justice today. Uh, I I remember reading an interview, because remember when when, uh, people were going nuts at E3, uh, when uh, this was back, I think when, is either the year of Xbox One reveal or the second E3 when they had that one game where you could like build anything you want kind of thing, um, and then all of a sudden they had Conquer pop up on the screen, and people were going nuts thinking, "Oh my God, we're getting another Conquer, or we're getting a remake or something," uh, and then it turned out it was just like some DLC for that game. Yeah, I, I think I remember that because I remember the crowd was just going nuts because every like everyone not only wants Conquer, they want old Rare back, right? Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, it's not going to happen. Pretty much everyone from Old Rare has left the company, but um, and we know some of them. You know, we all know that uh, a lot of them went off and formed that one studio that that made the Rare like game, uh, Playtonic. Play, Playtonic Games. Yeah, they made uh, whatever it's called now. I can't remember. What's Ukulele. That one. Ukulele. Ukulele. Yeah, it hasn't released on Switch yet. Come on, guys, get on top of it. <laughs> I know. I re- they recently updated like back in September that they're waiting. They're they're fixing some bugs or whatever. Uh, which is fine. At this point, they might as well wait longer because Mario is going to come out and no one's going to care. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and the fact that it didn't really get that good of reviews in the first place. Uh, but again, I'm still going to buy it because I feel like Banjo Kazooie, if they just remade that and released today, wouldn't get good reviews. Uh, because I think a lot of people just aren't used to these collectathon things outside of Mario. And Mario kept progressing forward. Ukulele, I heard, I haven't played it, feels a lot like the old games, including the quote-unquote bad stuff and when i play those games i don't remember bad stuff yeah so <laughs> um, it feels like it doesn't feel like a modern game like that you would play on the nintendo switch or playstation sure. 4 it feels like if they would have made banjo 3 or whatever it could have been called for the gamecube or the wii sure this feels like what that would have been that's fine to me that's exactly what i want it to be which is like the same thing <laughs> with the updates aren't enough to make it feel like a modern game, but they are enough to make it feel like it would have well, been. What's a modern game today? on the game? With, with the indie scene, what the heck is a modern game? I mean, we're back to playing eight bit and sixteen bit again. 
Yeah, true, true. I mean, that's kind of my thing. Like, I didn't. The I think some people had some. Um, some especially critics had some unrealistic expectations that this would be like a triple A level, like a Mario Odyssey. Um, and I understand that, but this was a new studio forming. Yes, they had some funding, but the funding was nowhere near what like a Mario Odyssey had. Mm-hmm. Um, so like you have to consider the limitations they worked under. They needed to just prove they could make a game like that. And hopefully sell enough of it to have a bigger budget for the next one, whatever they do, whether it's a sequel or a new IP. Um, again, I mean, if they if they even hint at anything related to a Conquer style game coming out, I'm I'm probably gonna pass out that day and die, have a heart attack, <laughs> um, for the right reasons. Although I don't know any right reasons that leave my kid without a father. I'm, yeah, yeah. Eh, you got you got it, Eric. <laughs> yeah, You're ready for dad. Dad sure. at three. Here we go. Um, but yeah, so I guess we're, we're at that conundrum. Is it is it Smash or is it Conquers? My vote goes to Conquers because it, it's literally my favorite N64 game. I'm I'm going with Conquers on this. <laughs> and, I mean, we can flip a coin. If it ends up being a two-two, we'll flip no, a coin. No, no, we'll, we'll make this like as. I I'll make it. I'll make it simple, Eric. What do you want to do, Eric? I. He, I, he loves. I have to go with Conquers. Oh, it there's is my, it is my favorite game of all time. So I mean, I, I, I mean the only reason why I picked it was because I I just it, you know with Smash, it, and it, you know if I had to pick a game off of it, it was just kind of one of those things that it was, I think a little bit less known than the rest of the games on there. Yeah, I don't remember how well it sold. I don't remember looking but, at sales numbers for Conquers. But um, to me, it's a, I, I I like that game better. Okay, so I guess that, that kind of solidifies that game on the list. Um, so now, now this is the question number three, because I don't think any of us are going to make, or that I can make a legit argument that's going to make Mario 64 get bumped. Because you guys are all going to want Mario 64 on there. I'm going to want Banjo-Kazooie. I'm going to lose that argument. Um, I just know I'm going to lose that argument. And, and I know you guys are probably all fans of Banjo-Kazooie. But mm-hmm. uh, Mario 64... Um, unlike Ocarina of Time, where I felt like I I could make a you know this legit argument, I feel like I can make a strong case. But people... there, there is zero case at all. The fact that the whole rare collectathons killed the 3D world for a while that that speaks highly that it's not. They at did. All they didn't kill it. People just stopped making them. Well, they stopped making them because people they... stopped buying them. No. Oh, okay. Stopped... What was the sales of? Uh... For, forget, forget. Uh, what, what was it? Nuts and bolts or whatever. No, yeah, yeah, no. Um, Nuts and bolts is terrible. My, that, let's put it this way: Rare didn't kill it. Microsoft killed that game. No, come on! They stopped making banjo game. They made banjo, banjo Tooie, D- Donkey Kong sixty four. Like those three games, like just destroyed the whole genre, and what? it went away for years. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> okay, I, I, I gotta stop you for a moment. How well did those games sell? I don't have a computer in front of me, so I can't look up sales figures. Let me look it up again. Because I would understand your argument if those games didn't sell well. If they sold well, then what happened really is that Rare got sold to Microsoft, and then people stopped making them besides Nintendo. Because literally, if you think about the 3D platforming back then, it was Rare and Nintendo. No one else was really making them. Uh, there was Crash Bandicoot, of course, uh, which we know that ended up getting abandoned when they st- when they had Naughty Dog move on to some some other series. Banjo Kazooie sold 3.65 million copies. Okay. How about Banjo Tooie and Donkey Kong? You might as well throw Conquer sales in there too while they're at it. Um, well, he's Banjo-Tooie. Like... Okay, so you go from that down to 1.49 million. Sure. Okay. So that's a huge drop for a sequel. And what, and what was Donkey Kong 64? Now, see, I wasn't a huge fan of Donkey Kong 64 myself, but I know some people that are passionate about that game. Donkey Kong 64 did 5.27 Okay, million. Nintendo IP. Yeah. Um, And then, uh, what was it? I'm just curious what I'm talking about. What was the sales for Conquerors on 64? I don't care what it was on Xbox. Yeah, I'm just... Cause that, that was Super, a, okay, and in compared, Super Mario sixty four did almost twelve million copies. Well, yeah, Super Mario so, sixty four was like. So the when only you're looking at watched. Nintendo, when Nintendo's looking at the numbers, these things are declining big time. Like it's huge. 
Um, but they, but here's the thing. Nintendo didn't abandon 3D Mario. They actually no, abandoned 2D they, Mario. But they waited a while before it came back. And then Conquer was point seven seven. Conquer didn't even do a million. Uh, I mean, you say they wait a while. They basically were doing one per generation. Uh, they, they had Mario 64. And then they had uh, Sunshine on GameCube. And then they had Galaxy on Wii. I mean, it really wasn't until Wii U that they... Like didn't really have a traditional, but I'm saying game. like, I, of course, Nintendo's not going to get rid of you know, Mario, obviously. But I mean, when you're talking 1996 to 20, 2002 is the gap between 64 and Sunshine. But what I'm saying is, is all other companies stopped the 3D. Well, realm. but but what stopped it was it that people didn't want to buy the them anymore, they were or was it less that games? Well, but but see, my argument for that is that. Was it that they stopped making them by choice or because Rare, the company that was making them all, got sold to Microsoft? That had nothing to do with it, I don't think. But they, because... so the game stopped when it got sold. Literally, if you look at the timeline, as soon as it got sold, they stopped making them. So something had to happen there. They were making them on Nintendo systems. Microsoft buys the company, and then they kind of stopped. They made nuts and bolts, which ended up to be not even... It sucked. It was not... It's an embarrassment to the Banjo Kazooie name. It's yeah. not. It's not a Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, name at all. It's nothing like Banjo. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know Mike. I don't know whose idea it was. There actually was, a, I think, an interview where someone explained uh, what was the thing behind that game. Some they were trying to Miyamoto it. I think unique ideas. Blah 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 blah. Uh, and they just totally forgot what the series is along the way. <laughs> um, to that, to me, I think that game, that that game right there, is what killed it because when Microsoft brought them over. They ported Conquer's Bad Fur Day. That was like a huge, big thing they did on Xbox, the OG mm-hmm. Xbox. Is that was like their first big rare game? Is they brought Conquer over, which at the time made sense. Their big game was Halo, so bring over their M-rated rare game. Um, and I don't even know what the sales of that did. I I, I didn't pay attention to the sales of that on Xbox. Uh, but then after that, they went right ahead and made Nuts and Bolts, and Nuts and Bolts was just terrible. And after that, they stopped. Okay. So, like, my argument is that as soon as it got sold to Microsoft, Microsoft basically killed the company. Um, and they, it was, what's even crazier about that is they actually kept a lot of that rare talent around into the release of Kinect and then forced them to make Kinect games and stop letting them make unique IPs. Um, just, that's my little, the, the one thing I'll never forgive about Microsoft is when they told them, oh, oh, oh you made Viva Pinata. Hey, that's a really great game, but now you're done. Now, now you're just going to make Connect games because we need a good company to make Connect games. And to be fair, Rare made some of the best Connect games, but nobody cared about Connect. So it's like you made the best games and nobody played. <laughs> and they were. I just, I just think if you're if you're talking about a Nintendo 64 classic, sure. to not have a Mario game on there and yeah, have a Banjo yeah. game on well, there I mean, is ridiculous. I mean, here the, the the bottom line is that I'm not going to try to argue that Mario 64 should be kicked off for Banjo, even though I think Banjo is the better game. Because I'm going to lose that argument uh, for several reasons. Obviously, sales reasons. Obviously, the fact that Mario 64 is really the only reason people picked up and then 64 the mm-hmm. first two years. It was like the only game at launch, essentially. I think there was Pilot Wings as well. Um, and Mario 64 was like the reason. It, like it, it, People always talk about... Uh, uh, I heard some people argue that uh, outside of Breath of the Wild, that, that the Switch's launch lineup was weak. Have you looked at the launch lineup of the N64? It was two games. <laughs> it's just one of those happened to be Mario 64. Um, so, like, literally, if you bought, uh, a, you know, you just talk about every, you know, more Breath of the Wild copies sold than, than units sold. I, Mario 64 probably did the exact same thing back then. Um, plus, Mario 64 sold more than any Zelda game has ever sold on an individual platform. Um... Yeah, so I think we'll, we're obviously going to probably leave Mario 64 alone. We already had the argument for Majora's Mask to be the, the Zelda game of the list. Um, so I think what might be an interesting one is, do we think, at this point, I think, uh, sorry, Jesse, I don't think Perfect Dark's going get, to get in over Mario Kart. Um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't expect it to over Mario Kart. But Smash <laughs> might be a make for an interesting debate here. They're both multiplayer games. They both were huge. Smash was the first of its game on there, whereas Mario Kart started on the Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um, now, obviously, uh, and we're, I think we all have fond memories of both of those games, of course. Um, maybe not Game Over Jesse since he said he had no friends. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I wish you would have grew up around me, man. We yeah, were right? playing this stuff like nuts. 
And like I would even I hate saying this. If it was my choice, like if this was just my top five, Smash and Mario Kart are gone and Pokemon Stadium's in. But I don't think Pokemon Stadium I, just like I didn't think it was worth me trying to argue like we had a nice debate over like when 3D platformers died um, which I don't really we don't really go you know what audience let us, you guys let us know why you think 3D platformers died I'm actually really curious on what people's theories out there are because there's no reason that Mario kept going and just no one else could do it in my opinion <laughs> my my uh, simple answer is no third party wanted to compete with Mario <laughs> yeah that, that could be yeah, yep. even Crash Bandicoot was, per- was pretty good until they had Naughty Dog move on to some new stuff uh, Crash Bandicoot was actually like the mascot of Sony for a long time mm-hmm. um, or at least I don't know if Sony ever confirmed that I'm trying to remember it might have just been the fans considered it the mascot um, and maybe it was just because Mario did it well and then Sonic just tanked at it and then Rare kind of tanked and then there just wasn't any company left that's good at it, but Nintendo, I, yeah. I don't know. It, what was actually really crazy is how long Nintendo abandoned 2D Mario. Um, because 2D Mario games massively, even throughout history, outsold the number of copies 3D Mario did. Um, and even still do to this day. But yeah, obviously that really helped them on Wii, when they, Wii and DS when they brought back 2D Mario. Um, so yeah, Smash, Mario Kart 64... I'm not going to buy... I want to throw Pokemon Stadium in there, but no one else is going to vote for that. <laughs> Eric, what, what are you thinking? Is it, is it Mario Kart or Smash? <sighs> Kart. Kart? Okay. I figured you put Kart on there instead of Smash, I think, if I remember right. So... um, You guys you guys going to stick with Kart, or either one of you guys want to go with Smash? No, I think Kart's the one. Yeah, Kart... Okay. Cart's uh, one of the 64 games that I was actually able to play with other people. With other people, yeah. I, I think I play more of Mario Kart than Smash. Um, I could play Devil's Argument or, uh, Advocate and try to make this big argument for Smash to convince you guys, but uh, the thing is, I love both these games so much. I'm totally fine with Mario Kart. So right. I think that's going to make our list, unless you guys want to bump anything. Uh, our top five, as it stands now, after much debate, we, we bumped off... One game. Oh, it, this is how it started. It started with two people wanting to bump off Majora's Mask <laughs> for Goldeneye or Perfect Dark. It ended with only one game getting bumped off, and it wasn't Majora's Mask. It was Ocarina of Time <laughs> for Goldeneye. Uh, and it also started with Conqueror's Bad Fur Day wanting to get knocked off by the same person who put it on the list, Eric, and then him realizing, well, it is my favorite <laughs> game of all time. How can I bump it? Yeah. Um, so our top five, one game change, but a long debate to get there. Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. GoldenEye, Mario 64, Majora's Mask, and Mario Kart 64. And I don't want to hear any of you guys arguing out there that Mario and Mario Kart, like, same franchise stuff. Get out of here. Get out of here. Um, all right. So, you, you guys are good with that list? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So that is our top five for N64. Obviously, you guys, let me know down in the comments. or let Yeah, let us know down in the comments below what your top five N64 games are. Uh, and what you thought of our our, our our heated debate. I knew this was going to be a heated debate. Because, yeah. because this is why I cut it to five. Because five is, is what makes it hard. If this was I ten... I think we, we took just as long talking about just Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask oh, I'm sure. as we did for the entire Well, people game people point. have been waiting yeah, right. for me to, to... You guys asked. You guys asked. So I did it. All Majora's Mask fans out there, you can thank me. But then you're going to hate me because you'll probably still think Ocarina of Time is awesome. And I just think it's okay. 